Hi, this is Jason DeCanio once again, welcoming you back to another edition of Jay's Retro Toys and Games for Monday, May 2nd, 2022. And this is episode number 13, and we're ready to go tonight with another toy that was just like the Lego bricks, has its history. Yes, we're looking at a metal toy mainly based on construction sets. Originally patented by Alfred Carlton Gilbert and first sold by his company, the Misto Manufacturing Company of New Haven, Connecticut, all the way back to 1913. So it's been 100 years, and it'll be 110 next year. And the company has fa continually given kids of all ages, mainly boys, a chance to build upon their imaginations with pulleys, gears, wheels, and levers, and other mechanical linkages. Yep, we're talking about the thing that every kid wanted, and if you got it, you were pretty lucky. We're looking at the Erector Set tonight on Jay's Retro Toys and Games. here again for another edition so let's look at the director set tonight on the show oh yeah hope you had a great weekend and we're ready now for a look back at history in the making with this great toy that's been around almost over close to 110 years will be next next year we'll make 110 um so as we were Digging in here, in 1916 of the Erector set, it's a brand of metal toy construction sets. And in 1916, the company was reorganized as the A.C. Gilbert Company. The brand continued its independent existence under various corporate ownerships until 2000 when Meccano brought the Erector brand and consolidated its worldwide marketing with its own brand. The coverage here focuses on the historical legacy of the classic Erector set, for current developments under the Erector by Meccano brand name, see the Meccano article. Basic Erector parts included various metal beams with regularly spaced holes for assembly using nuts and bolts. A frequently promoted patent, patent feature was the ability to fabricate a strong but lightweight hollow structure girder from four long flat pieces of stamped sheet steel held together by bolts and nuts. Flatter curved pieces of sheet metal in various shapes and colors could be added to the structural skeleton. Hardened steel rods and screw clamps allowed the construction of hinges and the transmission of mechanical power via rotating parts such as pulleys, gears, wheels, and levers. And unlike some earlier wooden construction sets, a rector could be used both for static structures and for dynamic structures, incorporating mechanical linkages and other moving parts and components. Modular, standardized construction sets like Erector provided the ability to build a model, then take it apart and build something else over and over again. Both AC-powered electric motors and battery-powered DC motors became available, usually equipped with gears to increase their torque and effective mechanical power. Later sets added miniature light bulbs and simple switches to control electrical power. Erector remains a very versatile constructional medium. Almost any mechanical device can be built with this system, from structures to complex working cranes, automatic gearboxes or clocks, and is frequently used to prototype new ideas and inventions. Model realization using Erector is limited only by the imagination and ingenuity of the builder. Now, it was first envisioned by Alfred Carlton Gilbert in 1911 as he rode the train from New Haven to New York City, and this section of track was being converted to electrical power, and Gilbert watched as steel girders were erected to carry the power lines, inspiring him to develop the toy. Gilbert was a skilled magician and manufactured magic tricks and magic sets with his existing company, the Misto Manufacturing Company. 
The first Erector set was made there in 1913 called the Erector One Structural Steel and Electromechanical Builder and labeled as educational, instructive, and amusing. The toy was first introduced and sold to the public in 1913 at the Toy Fair held at the Broadway Central Hotel in New York City. Erector quickly became the most popular construction toy in the United States, most likely because it was the only construction set at the time to contain a motor. And then in 1914, the name was changed to the Misto Erector, the toy that resembles structural steel. In 1916, the company was reorganized and became the A.C. Gilbert Company. The product was renamed Gilbert Erector. And the toy like structural steel they called the okay the product was renamed Gilbert Erector the toy like structural steel then in 1924 more changes occurred as the entire erector system was completely overhauled to include over 70 types of parts erector was now called the new erector the world's greatest toy through 1932 erector was sold in wooden boxes but 1933 to 1962 The sets would be sold in colorful boxes made of painted steel. Early boxes were colored red, green, or blue. And by the 1950s, all set boxes were painted red. As the company grew, the area around the Gilbert factory became known as Erector Square. A.C. Gilbert died in 1961, and the company went into decline, filing for bankruptcy in 1967. The product was redesigned, adding many plastic parts, but the clunky-looking models fail to compete with the new, more realistic-scale plastic models coming onto the market. The Gabriel Company of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, bought the Erector brand name and continued to market the recently des- redesigned system, and though by the mid-1970s, most plastic parts had been removed or replaced by laminated fiberboard or for panels, and as a savings measure due to the oil crisis. Sales were slow, and by the 80s, the trademark Erector was acquired by Ideal Toys and then Tyco Toys. In 2000, Meccano bought the Erector brand and unified its presence on all continents. The two brands are now sold under the Meccano brand name, with the Erector set being marketed as Erector by Meccano. Then in 2002, a movie based on A.C. Gilbert's life called The Man Who Saved Christmas was made for television. It focused on Gilbert's successful appeal to the Council of National Defense to reject a proposal to ban toy production in favor of wartime-related materials during World War I. An extensive collection of A.C. Gilbert Company scientific and educational children's toys is housed at the Eli Whitney Museum in Hamden, Connecticut. Over the years, erector sets have been used to prototype a variety of devices, including... In the 1949, the Erector set was used to build the precursor to the modern artificial heart by William Sewell and Dr. William Glenn of the Yale School of Medicine. The external pump successfully bypassed the heart of a dog for more than an hour. In the 1970s, information theory pioneer Claude Shannon constructed a bounce juggling machine from an Erector set. In the late 80s, with an Erector set, various old toys and bits of jewelry, Jack Kevorkian jury-rigged a machine he called the Thanatron, later renamed to the Mercitron. Three bottles were suspended from a rickety beam, one filled with a saline solution to open a patient's veins, another with barbiturates for sedation, and a third with potassium chloride to stop the heart. After Kevorkian connected the patient to an IV, he or she would pull a chain on the device to start the lethal medications flowing. He called it his Ruby Goldberg suicide device. In the late 1990s, engineer Mark Sumner used Director to create a working model for Soren, an attraction at Disney's California Adventure in Anaheim, California, and World Disney World's Epcot near Orlando, Florida. In 1990, Meccano S.A. built a giant Ferris wheel in France, It was modeled after the original 1893 Ferris wheel built by George Washington Gale Ferris Jr. at the World's Columbian Exposition at Chicago and was shipped to the United States to promote Erector by Meccano after Meccano S.A. 
had bought out the Erector brand name and began selling Erector by McConnell sets in the U.S. It went on display in New York City, after which it was purchased by Ripley's Believe It or Not, and put on display in their St. Augustine, Florida Museum. The model, the largest in size at the time, is 6.5 meters, weighs 544 kilograms, was made from 19,507 pieces, 50,560 nuts and bolts, and took 1,239 hours to construct. At this mass and size, some deviation from a rector by Meccano only parts was a necessity to prevent it collapsing, mainly in the structural spokes. The largest model by mass would certainly be in contention, but some models have topped 600 kilograms and there you have it friends the erector set the history of a toy that has spanned close to 110 years and we gave it to you here on episode 13 of jay's retro toys and games well next time on the program we're going to look at some games again remember we're doing two toys then two games then we go back to toys so in this case, we did two toys. We did the Lego and the Erector set. And this time I want to focus on a game that I think has a lot of history to it. Let me see if it has a big history to it. <coughs> uh, let's see. No, that's <laughs> that is not what I was thinking it was. Okay. Let me see. There is, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see if this has got a long history. Not really. Uh, I was going to do Othello, if you remember the game really well. Had a pretty good version of it. Yeah, we'll do that on episode 14. Othello comes up. The game is called Reversi. It's a strategy board game for two players played at an 8x8 uncheckered board. It was invented in 1883. Othello, a variant with a fixed initial setup of the board, was patented in 1971. We'll look at that game next time on Jay's Retro Toys and Games. I'm Jason DeCanio. Have yourself a great night. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye for now.
forget to subscribe to the Democratizing Network for great more content like this one.